Hey guys, it is nearly the end of 2017 and I just want to update you with everything that is happening with my life right now. I don't know if anybody really care, but that doesn't really matter. This is, I, I just want to get started with a journaling my life in an audio format because, well, that's just kind of fun. All the best guys do it. Gary Vaynerchuk, Tim Ferriss, uh, the guys over at The Daily Wire. I just love podcasts and I thought I might join the club. My name is Nick. For anybody who doesn't know, I am a 38-year-old motion graphic designer who has a full-time job but also runs a business on the side. Uh, I'm also into music. I'm also into like graphic design, uh, illustration, music, a lot of stuff across the genres. My last boss used to call me a, uh, a really talented guy, which is probably one of the nicest things anybody's ever said to me. That being said, um, look, 2017 has been a very interesting year for me. A lot of things have changed. A lot of massive things have changed for me. Um, and a lot of, a lot of, there are a couple of events that happened this year that kind of put things in perspective for me, which I, I really didn't realize at the time um, how much of an impact they would have on me, but it really sort of just made me stop and think about uh, a couple of things in my life. One of the first things that happened this year was, uh, well, hurting myself. I basically, one day I was in the lounge room and um, I was tying up my shoes as you normally do as you go to work. I was putting on my uh, my chucks and man, chucks are hard to put on because there's so many laces. Well, there are only two laces, but there's just so much to lace up with chucks. And um, as I was putting them on, I, I just bent over a little bit too far while I was sitting on the couch. And I heard this, I, I felt this, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's like a little crack in my back. And it felt like, I don't even know what the pain was like. I can only imagine it would be the same sort of feeling you would get if somebody just stuck a knife in your back, in my lower back. And I was doubled over on the floor. I was in pain. Thankfully, my housemate Alex was at the house. Um, I basically told him what happened and he was just sort of had a little bit of a giggle and also a little bit of empathy as well. We rang the doctor, doctor came over, gave me some painkillers and helped me get back on my feet. But for a good portion of the next, next couple of days, I was basically incapacitated and I couldn't move around. And when I was lying there on the couch, I, was, I had this sort of flash forward, if you like, of what it would be like to be old, decrepit, and unable to look after yourself, you know, like being basically immobile. And I thought, man, I don't want to be in this situation. I'm only 37. I was 37 at the time. I'm only 37, and I just don't want to end up this way. Um, and so I decided to um, basically get some physiotherapy, figure out what exactly was wrong. And my, physio my physiotherapist basically said, well, you know what? you're just not exercising. You're just not doing anything. Your, your core, my, like my stomach, my gut muscles, as, uh, as Jocko Willing would call it, my gut was just, uh, was weak, just weak. It turned to mush. And, um, that's something that I used to take pay attention to. Like I used to swim a lot and uh, I used to move a lot. And, uh, that was one big thing that I, I used to put a lot of effort into was actually looking after my, my middle section at least because I used to sit down all day. But getting older, I didn't realize how much I neglected it. And sitting down for long periods of time doesn't really strengthen your your core muscles. So I had to basically get back into physiotherapy, retrain those muscles again, and also put exercise back in my life. Uh, I'd also become very overweight. I was probably like, uh, due to a couple of circumstances, personal circumstances, and dealing with a bit of grief, I uh, basically was eating myself stupid. I gained... I'd gone from a, a basically a svelte 83 kilograms and climbed my way back up to a 91 kilogram kind of guy, um, which was not great. It's not where I wanted to be. And um, so I had to relook at, re at my life and uh, re-examine my health because, man, you, you've got to look after yourself. So happy to say I've, I've lost some of that weight. It's still going down, but, you know. I just thought I might share that with you. That was one. That was one thing in my life uh, that that basically uh, that basically changed my point of view. The other thing was that while I was going through it, and I didn't realize at the time. Um, look, I, there was a lot of stuff that happened in my life personally last year that I, I don't personally feel like I, I want to. I don't want to share with you guys because that if you want to, just ask me. But there's a lot of stuff that happened in my life last year that. Took a, took a bit of a toll on me personally, and I didn't acknowledge it at the time. I'm a, one of those guys who is a bit of a delayed reactor. Like, 
if something tragic happens in my life, it probably takes me a couple of weeks for me to get over the fact that something has occurred or even acknowledge it. It just, my, I just, it's like a rubber band. It sort of just stretches and eventually it snaps back and I suddenly, I will suddenly have an emotional reaction to something. Um, but yeah, so for the, but that was the thing. Like it, it, I didn't realize when you're going through grief, when you're going through some sort of tragic event, it doesn't, it doesn't really click with you straight away that, uh, you are going through it. Um, and that was one thing that I had to take into account that when something tragic like that occurs, a piece of advice somebody gave me, uh, a piece of advice that I heard in a podcast was that, you know, when, when something tragic does happen, it, a, a good year, it takes usually about a good year for you to get over something like to really get over and process and go through all the emotions of these things to eventually get out the other side, which I completely understand now. I, I didn't realize it until maybe about a month ago that I was finally kind of out of that period. But it, it when you're in it, it's just tough. Like it's like you're walking through mud almost and you're just trying to get yourself back together. Um, and if I had to do it all differently, I guess, I know you just have to kind of find your own way, but in a, in a sense, I had to just sort of basically uh, get through, just get through, uh, each day, get through each moment. Um, not make an ass of myself, I guess, but keep a low, keep a low profile to some degree and just, just keep moving forward. Keep trying to plan for the future, keep trying to, uh, you know, think about what you got to do the next time. I thankfully though, I have to say like when you are going through the grieving period, friends make a massive difference. Um, you know, and, I, and I, I couldn't have got through this grieving period without the great friends and family that I have. Um, and it, it makes a big difference. So guys, the reason you should make friends is that you got it, making friends is like shoring up the banks just in case the floods come. Because eventually in everybody's life, something will occur, some disaster will occur, and you'll be really glad that your friends are there to help you out with that stuff. And so uh, that's an important thing. Like for me was learning that being close to people, being in touch with people, not, you know, and I know sometimes it's hard to, to really stay in touch with people, especially as you get older. Like I'm starting to realize that relationships, are, uh, are valuable. Uh, I shouldn't take them for granted, but it's something I have taken for granted in the past. I think it was something that I didn't know if I did it on purpose, but to a large degree, I, f- I felt that friendships are fairly disposable, but I'm starting to realize that I'm kind of glad that I invested myself into certain relationships. Um, and I'm so grateful for the ones that keep giving back despite how much I put in. So, and I know you know who you guys are. Um, look, but look, in some more tangible ways, I did write down some notes of things that I, well, I felt like I actually learned. Those are just some sort of off the top things that I thought. But look, here's some things I learned. I wrote these down. So, you ready? Nick's, Nick's tips, Nick's things that he's learned in 2017. All right, here we go. Number one, take regular breaks. Uh, look, and it's true. Like, you got to take regular breaks. And I don't mean this in, like, don't work at all, but take a break. Like, if you're working... You need to have those breaks. Like they're golden, you know, you need them because I actually, I actually realized that this year and I don't know if this is a health thing or was a grief thing or whatever it was, but I was getting sick a lot more often than I wanted to because I was just pushing myself through stuff. Like I was just not allowing myself to have rest. And I, I think that was a problem. Like I wasn't even giving my days in the week. I wasn't even doing my Sabbath guys. I wasn't giving myself rest. And I was getting, getting my, my body had a physical reaction. It was getting sick. So guys take regular breaks. Like it's not worth it. Like when you're in your early twenties, like doing all nighters is fine. It's kind of how you get your, your, it's how you, how you cut your teeth. But when you get older, man, it's not worth it. It just gets worse and worse. And to be honest, I'm having this thing now where if I am doing work and it's, it's going to take me all night, um, I just finish at 10 30. And I'll just pick it up in the morning. I'll just get up early at seven. Way better, way better strategy than you think it should be. Um, I know it doesn't seem motivated, but your brain, you don't understand that seven o'clock start, your brain is so much more focused than it would be at 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. So trust me, if you got to just, just sleep, sleep is important. All right. 
The other thing too, some another piece of advice that somebody gave me, um, again, listening to a lot of podcasts, particularly if you're not listening to the, uh, the certain podcasts, you got to listen to something like some, there's some good stuff out there. If I can recommend Tim Ferriss, it's a good one. Um, there's also Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, there's also, um, what's the other ones I'm listening to? Well, those two are a good start. Um, and with Gary V, he he's good. He 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 makes he keeps me motivated to keep trying new stuff and not ma- and not be afraid to make mistakes. And Tim Ferriss talks about um, you know methodologies of basically how to get the most out of life, which uh, I recommend a couple of his books, um, the Four Hour Work Week and the Four Hour Body. Anyway, they're not they're not sponsoring me. I just thought I might recommend these books. All right, here, here's the thing. So one thing, one of his interviews in Tim Fer- Tim Ferriss, uh, he introduced me to this. Uh, the creator of CD Baby. Now, CD Baby was this like uh, company way back in the day when CDs were kind of a big thing. This guy sort of just decided to make a a, a, a CD uh, web-based platform where you can sell your CDs online outside the distribution channels of um, you know all the big record companies. And he made a he made a mint off it basically. He made a few million dollars and donated the most of it to charity. So, but this guy super interesting um, philosophy and one of his philosophies is that uh, he says, he basically says, if you're, if you're getting asked to do things and your answer is not hell yes, then it should be, then it's an automatic no. And that's something I'm starting to realize is that when you're, when you're younger, you know, saying yes to everything is great. But as you get older, you need to start saying no to stuff. And that's something that's been a slow learning curve for me is because I love to say yes to everything, but I'm starting to realize that every yes that I say things to isn't becoming a hell yes. It's just like, yeah, all right, all right, okay, I'll do it. But I'm not excited about it anymore. And I need to tap into my gut instinct to tell me when things should be a hell yes or just, eh, I I don't want to be tepid about it. I want to be like out there telling people that, yeah, I want to do it and I'll put 120% into it, even though that's physically impossible. Um, than any, than the amount that anybody can possibly give. Anyway, that's a Simpsons reference. Don't worry about it. But yes, make your yeses, hell yeses. And if it's not a hell yes, make it a no. Um, now going back to the exercise thing. Um, now this is probably old news, but it's starting to make dawn. It's starting to dawn on me. It's starting to dawn on me. 80%. Now this is going back to health stuff. Now this is just an easy way to look at it, but look at it this way. Um, don't listen. Don't, I think, I think reality TV and I think all those shows that talk about weight loss, uh, they kind of get some of the point, but watching people eat properly is not good TV. Watching people exercise the crap out of themselves is a lot more entertaining. So that's why we always see a lot of people running, a lot of people jumping, that kind of thing. Look, if you want to lose weight, if you want to stay healthy, 80%, well, I'm just throwing this stat out there, but it's, it's in this proportion, 80% of your weight loss all contributes to what you eat. Like it is really important to understand that what you eat contributes the most. It's, it's, if you don't change your diet, essentially, uh, you're not going to lose weight no matter how much exercise you do. And it's probably the most inefficient way to lose weight is through exercise alone. You need to eat properly. 80% of your gains from weight loss will be, well, gains, 80% of your weight loss will be from what you eat. And it doesn't matter what anybody else tells you. That's the science. You eat less than you, um, sorry, it's less, cal- uh, little, how do I, how do I put this? You, you want to eat less than you're burning basically. So if you're, uh, if you're, if you're burning 2000 calories a day, uh, just doing nothing, you want to be eating 1800 calories. That's it. That's the basic math guys. Like don't, don't overthink it. That's as simple as it is. Um, I'm not saying starve yourself, but just eat less than you need in the day to burn. And if you want to just maintain, obviously just eat in the normal, regular base that you think. Obviously just, I'm not, I'm not a medical expert. This is just what's worked for me. All right. The other thing too, is that the other 20%, you guessed it, is exercise. Now, it's not so much that exercise is the most, isn't important. It's not that it's 20% less important, but exercise contributes in other ways to Weight loss is not your goal of exercise. Um, exercise contributes to things like muscle mass. Uh, it improves the efficiency of your body. Uh, think of your body like a car. Um, you need to take it out for a spin once in a while to make sure that it's working. It's not rusting. It's not, you know, sitting sedentary. So 
it's good to move. Your body craves movement. It's designed to move. So make sure you do move to keep that machine uh, efficient, basically. So look, you don't have to do a marathon. You don't have to be at the elite level of fitness of a, uh, what do you call, a, uh, a triathlete. I mean, these guys are, are, those guys are fit, but you should be at the level where you can and do uh, at least a little bit of walking. I, I recommend you just walk for an hour a day, just walk. Just do some walking. And if you can lift weights, that's even better. Um, that stuff, man, it, it, you'll be healthy. Like, walk, do a bit of weights, um, throw in a bit of cardio, and you'll be good. Okay, and the other thing that, um, look, I'm still going on this rant, so bear with me. I like to thank my sponsors. I don't have any sponsors, but, you know, whatever. That's the dream, guys, to have a sponsor. Who knows? Um, the other thing I want to, um, you need to kind of pay attention to is, um, let's see, what's on my list here? Uh, let's see, do, 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 talk amongst yourselves. Um, look, it's important to make time to not work. And what I mean by that, and that's different from taking regular breaks, but making, actual setting aside a time to not work. So whether that be just taking a whole weekend to not work uh, is important. Taking a block of time to not work is important. Taking you're deliberately doing it to, you're deliberately putting time aside to not work. Like that's important. Don't compromise on this. Don't compromise on yourself going in and thinking, oh, you know what? I'm just going to like, you know, I'm going to use up some of my break time and work or I'm going to use up my break time and do something uh, productive. Give yourself permission to just sit down and do nothing. Like, Give yourself that permission. Feel guilt-free. It doesn't matter. You will get more. It's not a tangible gain in the sense that you're not making any money. That doesn't matter. The long-term gain of this, you're playing the long game here. Like think about it as a marathon. Is not the your life is not a sprint. It's a long game here. Take a break so that you can rejuvenate yourself to do the next stage of whatever it is in your marathon it is. Like you need it. Your body needs it. Your mind needs it. You need to sit down take that break, uh, and feel guiltless about it. Like, don't feel guilty about not doing anything. Like, veg out. Just watch TV, read a book, go for a walk, sit in a cafe, and do nothing for a while. Just take... I got to tell this myself. Like, I'm not telling you guys this. I'm telling this to myself as well. I need to take... um, I need to give myself regular time to do nothing and feel guiltless about it because, man, I always want to be doing stuff, but even just, but just not, even allowing myself to just play video games for a while. Obviously don't let that extend too long, but do, do those things in moderation. It is, it is good for your soul, good for your mind, good for your body. Um, man, I had a lot of random thoughts. These are just stupid notes that I wrote down on the train. So bear with me here. All right. Another thing that I wanted to do was, um, look, one thing that's done wonders for me, especially through my grieving period, was I took a hobby I couldn't master straight away. And I don't mean I had no talent for it. I just could There's just no way anybody could be great at this straight off the bat. And I mean, like, I suppose the equivalent could be, like, learning how to play piano. Like, you could never be a master at playing piano. You could learn a lot of things in playing piano, like, in one year. But you'll never become a master in one year. It takes time, like... Even the greatest of the greatest musicians, the most talented of those musicians out there, take time to learn their craft. For me personally, it was drawing. I needed to learn how to draw. Like, I, I'm mad. I'm a, I'm a big fan of guys like Jim Lee, um, J. Scott Campbell, um, Todd McFarlane, uh, Joe Madera. These guys were just like some of my idols growing up. I just always wanted to draw like them. And I, you know what? Up until three years ago, I thought I was really good at drawing. I'm... I started drawing and I joined an art community. I tell you what, man, you join an art community and you soon realize how terrible a drawer you are because you can pay yourself to other people who are even just starting out. You're like, I just didn't know enough. I didn't know anything actually about, um, I really didn't know much about drawing. In fact, there was a whole lot of things that I, a lot of disciplines that I completely didn't know about. And I thought I was the shiz, but to be honest, man, no, not at all. I, I nearly need to do it. And, but to be honest, it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done because to see the improvement year on year has been, it's something that nobody can ever take away from me. And I put in those hard yards to get there and it, there's no achieve, there's no feeling of achievement quite like something that takes 
time to master. So guys, I, I implore you, pick up a craft, pick up something that you know you can't master in quickly. And it's not something that's very popular among people nowadays because everybody's trying to play the short game and try to get gains quickly. But trust me, it, it's it's something that you enjoy. It's something you will not regret. Just put in time to find something that you can try and master. And I mean master, don't stay in your mediocrity. I, don't, I appall mediocrity. Sure, do something for fun or whatever, but try something that you have a goal at improving year on year. Like, don't stay where you are. Um, okay, so being less distracted. Look, I'm always distracted, so that's something I, I'm trying to do this year. These are supposed to be things I learn, right? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, uh... Look, uh... Yeah, and this is the big one for me as well, is that I had to, this is the last big tip for me. Uh, oh, actually, this is the second last tip. Sorry, I'm getting a bit scatterbrained. What are we talking about being less distracted? <laughs> anyway, talent. Talent isn't your only road to success. Now, I read this really great book this year by uh, Scott Adams. He, he just wrote, a, he just released a book recently called Win Bigly, but he also read another book. Uh, which I'm just going to look up right here. It will just take one second. Yeah, I read this book and one of the things that he talked about was called the stack. Now, in programming terms, or if you're from Silicon Valley, they talk about this thing called the talent stack. Uh, and essentially, if you have a full stack, it means you can do all the disciplines uh, that are required of the job, I guess is how they kind of put it. But I mean, that being not being really the point. That's just how we kind of talked about it. But he was just saying a stack is um here we go oh no that's not it what is the what's the book called where is it oh yeah the book is called how to fail at almost how to fail at almost everything and still win big kind of my life's kind of the story of my life by scott adams now one of the fascinating things he talks about in it is that everybody has a, a everybody can kind of be average at something right like if you do if you take one skill um, to get to an average level of a certain skill doesn't take very much. It just takes you just learning the basics of that skill. For example, putting together a PowerPoint presentation. You don't have to be the most prestigious, most well-designed PowerPoint presentation put it together ever. You just need to know how to do it. Same with admin skills, same with bookkeeping skills, same with accounting skills, same with uh, general business skills, same with uh, speaking presentation skills. Now, the interesting thing that he points out is that if you put all those things together, uh, you actually have a talent stack that is more valuable than a lot of your coworkers are because you can do all those things, at least to a certain degree. And that makes you really useful. You don't have to be the best public speaker. You don't have to be the best administrator. You don't have to be the best PowerPoint, pre uh, PowerPoint presenter or the best business analyst. You just have to know how to do all those things together to a degree that makes sense and you're already way ahead of the game. And that kind of brought to me this uh, idea and I, I, I think I didn't realize this at the time is that everybody who I worked with at Hillsong, uh, do, you know, circa, what was it, 2004 to around 2011, just before I left, they all had, we all had this unique talent stack that people out in this, in uh, I guess the secular industry didn't have which we didn't know at the time because we were all we all got uh, bre uh, we all got taught inside uh, this uh, pressure cooker which was Hillsong and uh, it taught us some really valuable lessons on how to work uh, and really tight time frames it taught us how to work in a budget it taught us how to write our own scripts it taught us how to do our own filming it taught us how to do our own editing our own visual effects it basically was a really unique talent stack because there were not many people out there who could do that and that was what was unique and all of us um i would say have gone out and done everybody who's left and gone out to do stuff out you know in the corporate world or wherever we're doing done pretty well because mostly because we had this really unique talent stack and uh i i, I think that there is some truth to that like talent being the most talented isn't necessarily the only road to success being the most talented actually isn't I, w I would dare say, isn't the road to success. It's actually the skills that complement your other skills that make you more successful than the other guy. So um, what I'm trying to say is like, <laughs> you don't have to be the most talented guy to be successful. You just have to know what skills complement. Another way you could get to uh, success is 
finding skills that complement your other skills. Um, I'll elaborate this more in another in another podcast, but that's kind of the basic idea. So hope that makes sense. All right, I have one more point and then I am out of here. This has been the longest rant I think I've ever done. Um, you guys are probably super bored, but what evs? Um, I'm sorry. I hope you got something from this. All right, a little bit more controversial, but I thought I might share this because it's been a big part of my life. When Trump won the 2016 election in America, there was a complete meltdown from uh, all from one side of America and a complete cheer from the other side. Now, one thing you got to realize is that that is uh, how could that be, right? Why can one side see Trump as Hitler and one side see Trump as uh, a, basically a great guy? And we, one of those view, points of view is incorrect, or it could be something in the middle. In any case. Um, there are people who I think 2017 has been a terrible year and other people who have thought 2017 is a great year. Now, one way or the other, however you decide to spin it, um, whether you think Trump is a monster or Trump is a great guy, um, somebody had a great year and somebody had a bad year is what I'm trying to say. And, um, look, I personally don't think Trump is a monster. I think he's a bit of an idiot, but I think he is doing some things right and other things he's not doing so good. But that doesn't really matter. I don't live in the United States, but I would hope that if I was living there, I would choose to be on the side that would think that Trump isn't a monster. In the fact, I would want to believe that reality because you you can't. Why would you Why would you think that Why would you want to live in a reality where you think that your president is a monster? It just makes you feel like everything is bad around you, but it's not necessarily true. And the way you frame your reality uh, is important. Like, you, do you want to live a pessimistic life? Do you want to live a life that sees the bad in everything? Like, are you going to believe that um, everything... Because it doesn't matter. Like, you realize, too, that when... One of the things that really frustrates me is that every time Trump does something, he... Whether there's one side that cheers for him and the other side that doesn't cheer for him, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It's just that it's somebody's picked a side, but it's like, can we just not look at this objectively and say, is this good or is this bad? Take the name Trump off the table and let's just uh, see whether this guy is doing something good or he's doing something bad. I, I'm not saying that, uh, but I guess I'm not trying to say that Trump, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, this is not a pro Trump rant. I'm just saying that the way you frame your reality could mean that you're having a tragic life or a great life. And if you can control the way you view your reality, which you can, a lot of people can, um, it can imp- directly improve your mood in life is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, like if you don't, if you, if you don't control your filter, the way I think Scott Adams puts it in his new book, Win Bigly, if you don't control that filter in your life, you kind of have a miserable life. Like, you're going to have a life that makes you feel like everybody's against you. Everybody's trying to destroy you. But in reality, that's probably not true. In fact, there's a good chance that nobody really cares about you that much to want to destroy you. In fact, there are very few people in life who really want to destroy you. Uh, there are probably in li- people in life who just want to just get on by their life just like you do. Um, and it's it's just, I think it's super important that if you don't t- capture your thought life well, if you don't capture how you view your life well, then you're going to live in a miserable state. Uh, you're going to live. You're not going to build resilience when. In, I hope this doesn't occur. But when true, um, when true evil rears its head, we're not going to be resilient enough to take the uh, the actual tragedy that comes our way. And we need to be. We need to make sure that we're using the right filter, the right lens on how things are to make sure that we're not uh, framing a certain reality in a negative way that spins us out of control. We need to find positive viewpoints of everything. We can't view everything as negative all the time because that's not a good place to be. Even for your own point of view, even if you think someone like Trump is a monster, it doesn't do anything good for your soul to think that a monster is in the presidency. It's like, all right, well, what can we do about it? Let's not be negative about everything. Let's try and find a positive way to get through this. And trust me, if there there are ways there are ways to get around this uh, point of view, this reality, by 
you just got to just decide for yourself that television, media, and all that stuff, it's a lot of noise. It's a lot of opinions. And I have to say that I have been a victim of a lot of media bias in the past that I didn't realize. A lot of people just chatting around and it's just like a lot of people don't have a very informed opinion about anything. Um, myself included. I wouldn't say that I'm, I have all the facts, but I want to, I want to know, um, as much as I can, but I can't disseminate all the information I can from just a headline. Even my podcasts get it wrong. Sometimes I, I choose to still believe that inherently there are systems in place that are keeping things in check. There are people, good people out there who are trying to do the right thing. Um, but yeah, whinging, complaining and saying that the world is against them is not a good way to be. And look, I'm with you. I'm on your side and I want to see you all succeed. And anyway, I hope this makes sense. This is probably the most ranty rant I've ever done. I'm going to try this format for a few weeks and see how these podcasts go. Thanks for watching uh, all the vlogs or whatever it is I've done this year. Thanks for tuning in to all the random stuff that I've done. You guys are awesome. And um, I guess I'll uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Let me just, uh, let me just, uh, let me just, I said I was going to do this because I wanted to make sure that I did this. All right. If you haven't already watched these series on Netflix, these are my recommendations. American Vandal, fantastic mockumentary, sucked me in. I couldn't believe how good it was. Stranger Things 2, if you haven't seen that, that was great. Um, movies that you should be seeing uh, was if you haven't seen Arrival which I think came out this year did it come out this year? actually it didn't come out this year I don't think it came out this year actually, I actually don't know why it came out um, There are ton- there's a movie list coming out this year too oh man there's tons of stuff that I, I wanted to I should have written this down anyway guys thanks for listening and I'll see you next time <laughs>